All right, so we're in the cab of a CAT 2900 LHD. Um, we're going to install the mounting bracket for the mice and ferris system. One of the things we want to be careful of is not to just blindly drill through this dashboard. Uh, if we were going to mount it, say, here, we wouldn't want to necessarily just blindly drill this dashboard because we don't know what's behind here. It's electronics, um, airlines for the air brakes, um, and anything that we drill into, uh, we could damage the system. So one of the things also is we want to make sure not to block any visibility. So if there's already existing visibility, the operators are going to expect to have that same visibility available to them. So there's a blind spot from, from the rocks on this side to the air cleaner on this side. This is a really good place, some really good real estate to put a control panel. Um, in addition to, I guess, warnings about drilling on the machine, never, never drill into the ROPS. ROPS are rollover protection system. So on these four corners, you've got ROPS that are rollover protection. And, and if you drill into those, it voids the manufacturer's warranty. We think we're going to mount this one right here on this access panel. Uh, we'll take off the access panel, clear it underneath, mount the bracket to the access panel and then we still have, if you look at it from my vantage point, we're not blocking any of the operator's view. So in addition to that, two-way radios on the back have a type of a connector plugged into them called an SAE. And uh, I'm going to just try to pull this up. I just unplugged this from the two-way radio. Included with the kits, we have an SAE cable. So what we're going to do is take that cable and we're going to turn it into a Y, y connector. Um, so we're pulling 24 volts on the red, power, and uh, ground on the black. Uh, the nice thing about doing that is you're not messing with anything that's set up on the machine uh, existing, whereas you would be tying in if you were tying into power. Another option that's kind of hard to see would be to tie into switch power. The key switch here, um, again, this would be very difficult to get down into this, but uh, the key switch power down here, you have two options. You're going to have key on. Uh, and then constant power on the back side of this key um, and then start you don't want to tie into start but uh, so switch power comes into the back of the key and there's a couple other power locations back here um, I wouldn't recommend tying into the gauge gauge cluster because um, anything any power tap that you do from there can mess up the uh, the way that the system is reporting so make sure it's a primary power source yep. All right, so we've got um, our power supply, and I've got a lot more cord than I really need, so I've cut off the ends here. And what I've done is I've taken my ASE that comes with the kit, cut it in half, stripped off the red ends, and stripped off the red end here. Just give those a twist. There's a couple different ways to do this, different thoughts. If you want to solder these together, you can. Um, just uh, I recommend a high quality splice, high quality butt splice when doing this and a set of high quality crimps as well. So I've got a crimp for this I'm going to put on and the high quality crimps will always look like this. They won't be crimpers and strippers. They'll be just a set of crimpers and crimp that down and if it's done right you should not be able to pull those wires out it'll be a permanent crimp so now we've got one end that goes to the radio one end that goes to the machine and uh, one end one power end that goes to the fleet management system also on this depending on what type of end you have and on ours, we're going to make a semi-permanent connection. So I'm going to cut this end off, get rid of that end. Let's 
strip that down so the outside is ground here and the inside is power. So I've got my USB connector. Now on this machine I could wire it in with the USB but this is a more permanent connection. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the cable and just like the other one. Alright so we end up with uh, four cables on the inside. Uh, red, black, green, and white. So the green and white are data and if you're using this uh, mounting bracket that comes with the kit uh, there's no data transmit to that mounting bracket so we can just cut those off they just come with the cord and then we're left with uh, black and red so <clears throat> black and red are obviously our ground black and red power red marries up with the white from the converter and black marries up with the outside cable from the converter which is just silver the jacket cable and being ground cable that's what this is for uh, that's why it's jacketed and on the outside Again, please remember to pull on those cables. It's not a big deal. You make a mistake. You can always cut it off and re-terminate it, but if you don't do that pull check on there and they pull out on you, then that'll happen when the machine's driving and there's nothing worse than a short in a cab. And then even worse than that, the potential of a short causing a fire inside of a cab. Okay, so now I have our power system, power in, power to the radio, our Y connector goes through a fuse, fuse goes, provides power to our DC to DC converter, so we're going in with anywhere from 8 to 50 volts DC, and our output will be 5 volts DC 3 amps which will provide charging through our bracket to the iPad. Okay, so we've got the installation complete, the mounting bracket mounted to the top of the access plate. We've got the iPad in the bracket, and if you look from my point of view around the edge, we're not blocking the operator's vantage point because you can see the air cleaner right there and on this side we're not blocking the operator's vantage because of the ROPS on that side so and uh, yeah that's the installation on the R2900 CAT LHD